Hi, welcome to another video in my series of expressing inverse hyperbolic functions in terms of natural logarithms. And in this video, I'm going to show you how we can change y equals the inverse than of x into a natural logarithm. So if we take this equation and we just rearrange it, making x the subject, we would therefore have that x equals than of y. Now, than of y is the same as shine y over cosh y, so that leads to e to the power y minus e to the power minus y, all divided by e to the power y plus e to the power minus y. Now, to clean this up, because e to the minus y is 1 over y, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by e to the power y. And doing that leads to x equaling, well here we would get e to the y times another e to the y, well that's e to the 2y but it's best to work with e to the y all squared for something like this. Then we're going to get minus e to the minus y times e to the y, which is minus 1. And with similar results on the bottom, we're going to have e to the y all squared, and then plus 1. Now, if I multiply both sides by this denominator here, we would therefore get x times e to the y all squared, plus another x and that would equal e to the y all squared minus 1. And if I add 1 to both sides and subtract this term from both sides, what I end up with is 1 plus x equals, and then we've got e to the y all squared minus x e to the y all squared. And I can pull out a common factor of e to the y all squared. So that just gives me 1 minus x inside. And now if I was to divide both sides by 1 minus x, that would give me e to the y all squared and then take the square root to both sides. I therefore have that e to the y would be equal to plus or minus the square root then of 1 plus x all divided by 1 minus x. Okay? Now, we've got e to the y being plus or minus this result. But e to the y is always a positive value. So since e to the y is always greater than 0, because obviously if we look at the graph of e to the y, it's going to look something like this always positive then. So therefore, the negative option here is not going to be valid. Therefore, what we've got is that e to the power y must be equal to then the positive root of 1 plus x times 1 minus x. So I'm going to write that in a bracket all to the power half. So we've got e to the y then equals 1 plus x all divided by 1 minus x all to the power 1 half. Now if I take natural logs to both sides, I therefore have that y would be equal to the natural log of 1 plus x over 1 minus x all to the power half. And then I could bring the half to the front here, and knowing that y is the inverse than of x, we get the final result that therefore the inverse than of x can be expressed as a natural log as half times the natural log then of all of 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x. Now, what would this be defined for? What would the domain be? It's certainly not all values of x because we can only take the natural log of a value greater than zero. So if we're looking for that domain then, okay, let's just border that off, okay, down there. For that domain, 
then what we're looking for is 1 plus x over 1 minus x to be always positive. And to handle this type of inequality, because remember the denominator here could be negative, we need to make it positive. So what I'm going to do is multiply top and bottom by 1 minus x. 1 minus x over 1 minus x. So in the denominator here, we've got 1 minus x all squared, which is a positive value, and so that still is going to be greater than 0. So that means that the numerator here would have to be positive. So therefore we've got 1 plus x times 1 minus x has to always be greater than 0. And so looking at the critical values for this, I'll write that as CVs, if 1 plus x equals 0, that's going to lead to x equaling minus 1, or the other critical value would be when 1 minus x equals 0, leading to x equaling 1. And if we were to sketch that graph, it's going to be an inverted parabola, okay, call that y. This y here is nothing to do with this y here. We're just looking at the graph, say, of y equals 1 plus x times 1 minus x. So if the critical values are minus 1 and 1, it's a negative parabola, so it's going to look something like this. Okay, going through those points where x is minus 1 and 1. And we can see it's always positive above the x-axis when x is between minus 1 and 1. So this is going to be true for x being greater than minus 1, but less than 1. So this leads then to this particular function being defined for x between minus 1 and 1. Now if you were to put any value of x between minus 1 and 1 into this equation here and plot the graph, you'll get the graph looking something like this. Something we should be familiar with anyway. I did this in an earlier tutorial where we looked at this as being the reflection of y equals than x in the line y equals x. Remember, it's got asymptotes now at x equals minus 1 and x equals 1. So I hope that's given you some idea then how we go about working out how we can express the inverse than of x then as a natural logarithm.